Gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I'm back in collaboration with Chip3 Games with another Gearlock guide. Today we're going to be talking about Pickett, and in preparation for that, we have got his Gearlock mat, his reference sheet, his dice, and his chip all ready to go and demonstrate whatever we need for this video. If you want to know about gear locks in general, then you can watch the first video in the series, which is a gear lock anatomy guide. But this video is all about Pickett. Like all gear locks, Pickett does have his stats appear in the top left corner of his mat. Pickett is very much his party's tank. He can ramp up his defense and he has a lot of protective and tactical abilities that are designed to get squishier teammates out of trouble. Just because he has great defense, though, doesn't mean that he isn't formidable on the attack. And you should especially watch out for Pickett if he's been drinking. We'll get to that. Like all gear locks, Pickett's stats are up here in the top left corner of his mat. You can see that he is a melee fighter, which makes sense for a tank. And then we also have his innate abilities printed here. His are shield wall. And then an 8 plus 1 is gear lock wall. Pickett's shield wall is designed to give him an advantage at the very beginning of battle. Essentially, at the start of battle, before his turn, without spitting any decks, just right off the bat, Pickett rolls all of his defense dice, and then they go into active slots. Bones, however, do not go into backup. So essentially, at the beginning of battle, you can take two defense dice for Pickett right now because he's at two. You roll them and you put them in his active die slots, which is normally where you would put defense if you roll it and you're waiting to defend on a future turn. However, what makes this special with Pickett is that instead of having to spend the dexterity to roll his defense on his first turn, he begins battle with some defense already ready to go, giving you that tactical advantage moving right into battle. Once again, if you roll a bone when you're rolling for shield wall, unfortunately you don't get to put it in your backup plan. It just doesn't go into an active slot, but getting to try for some early battle defense is a great thing. Once you get six bones in your backup plan and upgrade it to pick its innate plus one, you get gear lock wall, which is an improvement on shield wall. So what gear lock wall will do is once again, you roll your defense dice at the start of battle, but you actually have the option of locking them instead of putting them into your active slots. So, Locked dice do not take away from the defense die total on a normal turn. So it essentially lets you roll defense dice beyond the limitations of your stat. And in addition to rolling dice at the very start of battle and putting them in active or locked slots, having gear lock wall allows Pickett to always put defense dice into locked spots if he has the space even during battle. So it gives him a lot of flexibility when it comes to where he's going to put his defense dice, how he wants to deploy them, and if he wants to kind of stretch his defensive possibilities a little extra. So as innate abilities go, I think this one is pretty cool. But let's go ahead and talk about Pickett's professions. He has four of them. We're going to talk about them in the order printed on the Gearlock mat. So we're going to start with Captain, then we're going to go to Hero, then to Protector, and then to Warden. So we're going to hop around a little bit, but it's color coded and it's going to match what you can see on his reference sheet, which means that you're able to read along with me as we go. Pickett's first profession is called Captain. And the four dice that are part of this profession are super interesting because instead of just rolling them once and exhausting them like a normal skill die, you're actually able to lock them up here where they can actually remain and have persistent effects for the duration of the game. They do not exhaust unless Pickett is either knocked out, unless you're playing on adventure mode, in which case you don't lose your lock dice on a KO, or when you choose to exhaust them because you'd rather have some sort of different configuration of locked dice. Pickett only has three locked spots, so you're going to have to choose carefully what you actually want in them. The first die in the captain profession is called Stand Ground, and it has an interesting combination of faces. Some faces on this die will give you reusable bones, Others are going to give you permanent regeneration. So let's talk about reusable bones first. This die face appears with some other gear locks, but it is most prevalent with Pickett. Pickett is definitely the king of reusable bones. So in most cases, when you put a skill die in your backup plan, once you use the bones in your backup plan, that skill die will exhaust and it won't be available to you for the rest of the battle. However, if you have reusable bones, they will not exhaust when you take them out of the backup plan. Instead, they're going to go back to the skill slot on your gear lock mat. So if we have our reusable bones here, let's say that we acquire another bone and we want to shield bash, 
this will just go back to the defense dice. And this one, instead of being exhausted like a typical skill die, will instead go back on to the map where you can roll it again. What you might really be looking for though is permanent regeneration. If you roll this die face, if you choose, you can put it in a locked slot on Pickett's gear lock mat. And then at the start of your turn, you're going to heal for the number of HP printed on the die and it lasts for the entire adventure. In other words, once he manages to lock this die, then Pickett has the opportunity to regenerate every single turn for the rest of the entire game. Standing ground is the starting die in this profession. And as you can see, the arrows are gonna lead you to further interesting possibilities. Let's go and head to shield form first. Shield form once again has a few different options on its die faces. The first one is once again, reusable bones. One thing that makes this a good addition to this profession is that even if you have what you want in your lock spots, you can still roll these for your backup plan. And that's really never a bad idea. Additionally, you can end up locking constant defense and this basically acts as an extra defense every single time you take damage for an attack for the rest of the game. Although you can exhaust this when you use your backup plan, we will get to that. And then you also could roll a face that gives you a permanent extra two movement for the duration of the game or until you choose to exhaust the die. So this is essentially two extra spaces of movement where you get to move, but you don't have to spend any dexterity points to do so. And free movement in this game is pretty darn valuable. So once again, if you roll one of these results, you can lock it and leave it there either until Pickett's knocked out or until you choose to remove it to go for a different configuration of locked dice. Stand ground can also lead you to sword advance. And once again, it's gonna give you a combination of reusable bones and permanent additions to your game that are gonna make it so much more fun to play because they make you feel really powerful. So once again, we have our reusable bone. We do have a face that offers permanent extra movement, which again is pretty handy. And then we also have a permanent plus one that is called constant damage. If you roll this face, it's great because it always adds an extra damage to any other damage that you did to your target. So instead of having to roll for more damage, you just get an automatic damage every single turn. And you can in fact apply it even if you don't do damage to your target in any other way on your turn. So you can just put it up in a lock spot and do one extra damage every single turn for the rest of the game. And then our last die in this profession is called Lockdown. Lockdown is once again a combination of useful faces. Some are once again reusable bones. And the rest are constant taunt, perma taunting all of your enemies for the remainder of the game. This is a risky choice because when you have a taunt effect on, it means that all adjacent enemies have to attack you instead of another gear lock that they could have attacked instead. And that also applies when they have multiple attacks to deal out. So if you're going to talk trash, be sure that you can take the consequences. Once again, you would lock it here either until you were knocked out or until you decided to exhaust the die. And that sums up Pickett's captain profession. The next profession we're going to talk about is Pickett's hero profession, which is down here on the bottom right. And it is denoted by the color purple. This is a really interesting profession because it plays with the idea that Pickett is particularly good at defending himself and others by giving him skill dice that allow him to pick up defense outside of the normal defense dice and also allow him to give that additional defense to other gear locks by putting these dice in their active slots if he chooses. So the first die in this profession that you're going to pick up is called Confidence. And Confidence will have a bones face because it's, it's too many bones. But you can also pick up up to one or two additional defense off of this die. And what's going to happen with these is that they're essentially advanced defense. So they go into your active slot, but they don't count against the number of defense dice you have available to roll based on your stat because it's a skill die. So Pickett can either store those defense up for himself here in his active slots, or he could actually put it in the active slot of another gear lock to give them a little bit of a defensive boost in the heat of things. And most of the dice in this profession are essentially based on the same concept, but with different stats. So confidence can lead in two directions, to bravado or to tenacity. Let's go to tenacity first. Tenacity is very much like confidence in that it has a bones face, but it can also get you up to three points of advanced defense. So basically what that means is that confidence was good, but tenacity has slightly better die faces. There are more faces with the number two on them, and there's also three in there. Since it's basically a variation on the same theme, we're gonna talk about renown next. So we're gonna skip bravado for just a moment and talk about renown. 
Renown is again an advanced defense die with one bone space, but in this case, you can go from one to four, depending on how well you roll. And again, this can go in your active slot or in someone else's to be used as defense. So Renown is essentially the same concept as Tenacity and Confidence, but it has better stats. So Renown has higher odds of getting a three and then also odds of getting a four in terms of advanced defense. Then you have Bravado, which is a very interesting die because it really helps Pickett continue to amplify his defensive abilities. Bravado is interesting because it has several die faces that have a lot of bones on them, so just many multi-bone die faces. Or if you roll well and you choose to lock it, then this symbol indicates improved defense training. So if I've rolled this result and I put it in a locked slot, then what's going to happen is that during a defense training attempt, I can ignore one bones. And if you need a refresher on this, you can check the Gearlock Anatomy video. But essentially, when you're trying to boost your attack and defense stats, you have to roll your current stats and hope not to roll a bone. So essentially, what the Bravado die is doing is it's increasing your odds of having a successful defense training attempt, even when you start to have a higher defense stat. Put this one on the mat. And that is Pickett's hero profession. It's all about boosting those defense points for himself and for others. All right, so the next profession that we're gonna talk about is Pickett's protector profession. There are only two dice in it and they work very similarly. The dice just have different faces on them to give you different odds of rolling an actual intercept. So the concept of these two dice is interception. The first one, red shirt, We'll have some bones faces and then other faces that denote a number of interceptions that Pickett is able to perform. What's interesting about this die though is that it goes in an ally's active slot. This does not go on Pickett's gear lock mat, this goes on one of his allies mats. So let's see what that would look like. So for an example, let's say that our friend Patches is part of this battle and that Pickett has rolled to be able to intercept for one. This die is going to go into Patches active die slot, not Pickett's. And it's going to hang out in here until Patches is attacked. So let's say that the troll youngin wants to attack Patches. When he rolls an attack die against Patches, that one damage is not going to go to Patches, it's going to go to Pickett. And then we'll remove this die because it's a counter and he intercepted one attack. If this counter had been on two, that would mean that the next two times that Patches was targeted for damage, Pickett would actually intercept that damage. So if Patches is targeted once, Pickett will take the damage that time. And then the next time he's targeted, Pickett will take it again, and this die will be removed and exhausted. So the intercept die face is a counter telling you how many more attacks Pickett is able to soak up for someone else. The big catch with this die is that when Pickett chooses to do that, he can no longer take it back. There's no take backs on this. You don't get to pick and choose when you absorb an attack and it's just gonna go how it goes once you've committed to these interceptions. So be sure that Pickett is in good enough health to handle it. And also you can't ignore one attack in hopes of taking a different one later. You're gonna absorb damage the next number of times your ally is targeted flat out. The other die in this profession, Intercept, works along the exact same lines. So it has a bones face, but it also has more faces that will allow you to intercept. And the highest value on the die is actually three. So you can absorb damage up to the next three times that your ally is attacked. Do know, however, that you do have to absorb all the damage that they took and all the status effects, so be ready. So Pickett's protector profession is amazing if he's got squishier colleagues that he needs to defend while on the battle mat. But be warned, once Pickett takes on that protector role and commits to intercepting whenever one of his allies is targeted, each time that happens, he's going to have to absorb all of the damage and all of the effects for the number of times it happens as printed on the die. And now we come to Pickett's final profession, which is called Warden. Warden is really, really interesting because all of the dice that make up this profession have different configurations of the same die faces. It's just that one die might focus more on a certain ability than another. The ultimate goal in this case is to be able to get two dice with the same face because you can carry out a more powerful set of effects when you use two instead of one. So let's talk about what the options are and then discuss how they might be used. We're actually going to leave patches here to show some movement dice from the warden profession. Let's start with the first die in the profession, which is called Switch. Switch's primary face is in fact this little switch 
icon. This would go in an active die slot when you roll it. And essentially what it lets Pickett do is at any time during his turn, he's able to swap positions with an adjacent unit. Also, if you use that switch twice on the same turn, then you can heal the ally you swap with for three HP, or you can deal three damage to the baddie that you swap with. So let's say that I've got another die in my warden profession and I roll another switch face. If I've got one already in my active slot and I roll a second one, I could do something like switch with the troll, then switch with patches and then heal patches for three if he's hurt. Or from this position, I could use one switch to switch with patches. And if I use my second switch to switch with this troll youngin, then as part of that second move, I would be able to damage him for three, which is very handy. So essentially getting more than one of the same die face in this profession is great. But let's go back to talking about switch since it does represent all three of the skills available to you to use in this way. The second most common option on your switch die is called rush. And again, you can either use this immediately or you can put it in an active slot. And then when you use it at any time during your turn, you can move up to three positions. If you happen to have a second die with the rush result on this turn, then you can deal three damage to an adjacent baddie after you rush. So let's say that I just wanted to rush all around. One, two, three, one, two, three. Boom, I can hit him for some extra damage. So rush is great for getting around when you're in a rush. And if you can double it up and end up adjacent to a baddie, you can also kind of punch them in the face when you arrive at your final destination. The least common possible result on your switch die is called ripost. And this one just goes straight into an active slot. It can't be used immediately because you got to wait for someone to attack you before you can, you know, ripost them. So this is going to hang out here. And when you use it, it means that when you're targeted by an adjacent baddie, you can avoid all damage and effects that turn. However, if you happen to have a second ripost available, so if we've just been sitting on these ready to ripost anybody who tries to attack us, then we can both avoid all damage and effects that turn, and then we can use it to deal three damage to that baddie. So if this troll youngin decided to attack me and I have two riposts that I'm ready to use, he'll attack, I'll be like, no, haha, ripost. And then I can use the second one to get him for three. So essentially what the dice in this profession are doing is giving you the same set of options in different configurations, but what you really want is to have more than one die in this profession and then get two of the same results and use it to its max effect. So the first one we talked about was switch, which is mostly about switching. Most of the die faces will give you this result. You have rush, which once again offers all those different results, but most of the die faces are rush faces. You have ripost, which is the same deal, except that most of the faces will be ripost. And then you have situational awareness, which gives you an even distribution of all three options. So when you decide to develop this profession, be prepared to put at least two training points into it because really you're gonna want at least two of the dice to use it to its maximum effect. And now let's talk about Pickett's consumables, especially because they are fun. His first consumable is one to use with great caution. Remember when I said you should be careful around Pickett when he drinks? That's because his first consumable is a potent potable called Orcish Ale. So when you roll Orcish Ale, you use it right away. You essentially put it in your active slot, and this is the number of turns the Orcish Ale will be in effect, and you count it down per turn. So your options are only one or two. Really, nobody can be that hammered for more than two turns. But the back of our handy reference sheet describes Orcish Ale, and it will tell you that Orcish Ale is essentially a desperate Hail Mary measure to try to get you an extra round or two. But what will happen when Pickett drinks it is his HP is reduced to one, and that amount cannot go up or down for the duration of the effects of Orcish Ale. At the same time, true damage and fatigue will not affect him while he is drunk on this stuff. So what will happen is that Pickett will go to one HP, he'll be essentially invincible for the number of turns that the Orcish Ale is in effect, but then once it wears off, you exhaust that die, and Pickett's just sitting there with one HP, wondering what the heck he did for the last couple turns of battle. So Orcish Ale is super fun, but use with caution. You also have the Gobby Jerky, 
what this is is essentially a jerky that Pickett keeps in his pack, and he can restore the number of HP that is on the die face that he rolls when he goes for that jerky. So jerky is just a basic consumable that will heal him, and you definitely need that because he is a tank. All right, so now that we've discussed Pickett's professions and his consumables, let's go ahead and go over his backup plan because this is actually an extremely important part of Pickett's gameplay. And there are some special aspects of it that interact with his dice in ways that you need to know in order to play him correctly. So let's say bye to patches for now and focus on Pickett. On his backup plan, one bone isn't gonna get you anything. Six bones will of course upgrade you to Gearlock Wall, which is pretty great but it's the ones in the middle that are very interesting. So this first option for two bones is called Shield Bash. And Shield Bash is very powerful, but it's also going to leave Pickett very vulnerable because what it tells you is to remove all defense, including newly rolled defense, active slots, and locked slots. So that means if I've just rolled a skill die from this profession that has some defense on it, or if I have defense waiting for me up here in my active slot, or if I have locked my perma defense from this die, from the shield form, all of those dice. So let's just say that they're all here, that we've got a bunch of different dice. It's awesome. Pickett's ready to go. If I decide to spend two bones to use shield bash, what will happen is that all of these are going to be removed and the skill dice will be exhausted. So even though this was a permanent feature throughout the game, it's got the infinity symbol on it, this too will exhaust when you use shield bash. So this one will exhaust, this one will exhaust, this one will just come out and go back into the defense dice pool. But what happens is you exhaust all of your defense, you remove all of it from your mat, but then you deal the total number of defense that you removed in damage to your target. So by doing a shield bash, I could do one, two, three, four, five defense, if that was what I had, to this troll youngin and just boom, get him in one hit. So shield bash is incredibly powerful, but it also means that Pickett, a character who is basically centered on having lots of defense ready to go at all times, will be very vulnerable after he uses it because he will have no defenses left. And there's no way around it in the rules. So when you use shield bash, you're using every defense that you have. Anything that you just rolled, anything that's in your active slots, anything that's in your lock slots, including things with the infinity symbol on them, towards this massive conversion of defense points into damage. So let's keep going. If you spend three bones, you get a do-over. So if I have just made a big die roll and I don't like what I get, I can immediately be like, oh, let's, let's walk that back, let's walk that back, let's do it over, and spend three bones in order to re-roll all the dice that I just rolled. And technically it says you can reroll any number of rolled dice once. So if you rolled some dice that you like and some that you didn't, you can pick and choose from among them. Four bones is gonna get you benevolence. That lets you heal Pickett for two HP. And it also lets you add a defense to die to his active slot. So it's like a way of letting Pickett regenerate a little bit. And then for five bones, you get shield shock. Shield shock is great because it's basically the same thing as shield bash. So once again, you sacrifice all of the defense available to you from every slot, active, locked, or freshly rolled. But in addition to the shield bash effect, shield shock lets you stun your target as long as that target is not a tyrant. So let's say that this troll youngin is in fact some sort of massive 20 point baddie. He's got tons of health and we just hit him by converting all of our defense into damage. On top of that, we'll put a stun effect on him and a stun effect basically causes your target to miss their next turn. So with a shield shock, not only can you convert all of your defense points into damage, but you can leave your opponent seeing stars. As usual, Chip Theory does give some recommendations for a beginner's build for Pickett on the reference sheet. In terms of stats, it is recommended that you bump up Pickett's dex to three as quickly as possible, and then add a point to HP, attack, defense, and then dex again. You may need more HP if you're in a smaller party, but remember as you're messing with your stats that Pickett's best damage comes from his defense dice, so make sure you're prioritizing them accordingly. And then on skills, it's recommended that you choose the captain profession for the early game. And then once you've got those skills under control, you should move on to hero in order to get some big bumps to your defense and therefore to your damage. If you've got somebody squishy, then you're gonna need red shirt, but again, beware. And that's Pickett. 
To sum him up, he can be slightly complex to play because you have to figure out how to both generate a whole lot of defense and then also use that defense to best effect. But he's very sturdy and he has super interesting combat abilities once you explore all of his options. He is great as the tank in a co-op game. He's intriguing in solo play and he sure is a lot of fun to play on an ale night. Hopefully this has given you the confidence to play as Pickett in your next game of Too Many Bones. Thank you so much for watching and happy gaming.